Hi everyone, I'm Richard and well finally this is it. PlayStation 4 Pro, the new mid-generation refresh of the PS4, designed mostly with 4K screens in mind. But well, do not fear, there are some goodies for 1080p display owners too. Now, I've seen some really impressive 4K HDR game demos at the various press events, but the question is this, what cool stuff is there in the here and now at launch and just how much of an upgrade is it? And yeah, to what extent is this actually a 4K gaming console? Well, first of all, Tom and I discuss the form factor of the unit in the unboxing. But just to go over the basics, it's a fairly meaty piece of hardware, a fair chunk larger even than the original PlayStation 4. Port configuration is essentially identical to the standard model, but obviously HDMI 1.4 gets swapped out for the 4K equipped 2.0. Well yes, there's a USB 3.0 port on the rear. Toslink digital output returns having been dropped from the PS4 CUH2000 slim model. So all looking good so far, but when you launch the machine initially you may feel some sense of deja vu. It all looks and feels very familiar. There's no immediate wow factor from your upgrade. And this is the thing really, PS4 Pro is a PS4, simply one with beefed up specs. And yes, basic functionality from the front end is actually pretty much identical to the base machine. To illustrate, here's a time lapse where we've used our dual system control technology to run PS4 and the Pro from the same joypad. We went through every option and it's all pretty much of a muchness. Perhaps not surprisingly, only when you get to the video output options do you see any differences. Two additional selectables are here, 2160p YUV420 and 2160p RGB. Okay, so 420 is a useful feature actually, it allows those with older HDMI 1.4 4K screens that do support 60Hz to work with the Pro, but those with 4K 30Hz displays won't get much luck here. Now, I won't get too bogged down in the technicals, but to cut a long story short, a system known as chroma subsampling is used to half 4K bandwidth, so the data rate is compatible with HDMI 1.4, and a lot of screens out there do support this 60Hz format. And 420 is also used to properly support HDR via 10-bit output. RGB is the preferred option for non-HDR HDMI 2.0 screens though. And there's another unique option here that the base PS4 doesn't have. An information screen that tells you whether your display supports HDR and what content DRM systems your display can work with. If you don't have HDCP 2.2, yeah, then you might have issues running some 4K streaming media. Not that there's actually a huge amount of it that I could actually find right now. Amazon Prime was locked to 1080p for me, but Netflix at least supported Ultra HD and it looked great. For those interested, it looks like it uses around two megabytes per second of internet bandwidth there. In terms of using the standard media player to run high-end 4K media, well, I had no luck with that. Sony really needs to update its player software. And it's actually the same story on Xbox One S2. And that's a bit of a shame, actually. Both consoles have high-end media decode, but right now it seems you can't access that particular hardware for use with your own 4K media. Okay, but it's the games you're here for, right? So let's begin by talking about base PS4 compatibility. Regular Digital Foundry viewers will know that the Xbox One S comes with a GPU overclock that lets it run some games a little bit faster. And there's actually an opportunity here for Sony to follow suit. Now the question is, would it actually allow the Pro's faster GPU and CPU to work on existing games in order to better hit their performance targets without the need for developers to recompile their games for the new hardware? Well, the answer there is a basic and resounding no. PS4 Pro in base mode is identical in performance terms to the standard hardware. Running the same replay puts the exact same GPU load on both systems. And as expected, we get absolutely identical results. Sony put compatibility first with PS4 Pro and its existing library of 700 titles. So yeah, no extra performance on non-patch software. So, is the standard PS4 the 1080p machine and Pro only good for 4K? Well, running the same content at higher resolutions is the Pro's primary purpose, but that's not to say that you won't get substantial advantages on 1080p screens. When higher resolutions are downscaled to Full HD, there can be some big, big benefits. So take a look at Rise of the Tomb Raider here. I'm actually running 
the base PS4 game and the Pro version at 1080p output, but internally Pro is operating at 4K before super sampling down to Full HD. So check out the distant detail on this city in the Syria level. You'll note that there are severe aliasing issues on the base PS4 version as subpixel detail pops, flickers and shimmers. In fact, the lack of decent anti-aliasing is the biggest issue with this game's visual presentation. Now let's look at the Pro version. It's completely clean. All of that shimmer is gone and it looks so much more solid. Now I call that a night and day improvement to image quality, but there's more. Now I don't want to steal John's thunder here by revealing all of this game's 1080p charms. He'll have a video on that soon enough, but there is a higher quality Full HD render mode, but more interesting to me at least is the ability to run at an unlocked frame rate. It's not a locked 60 FPS throughout, alas, but it's another night and day improvement to an already spectacular game. And it's not the only title to do this. This is Infamous First Light, running here in its performance mode, and it's just glorious to play it at much closer to 60 frames per second. So what about those 4K modes then? Tomb Raider uses the checkerboarding system, and it looks really good on Ultra HD screens, and it's actually pretty hard to spot upscaling artifacts. The Pro works really well here in producing an Ultra HD output even if it's not quite flawless. Well I've talked a lot about upscaling in the past so I won't repeat myself too much here but I'll just make this one point one more time. This is a $400 box, £350 in the UK, and that's far cheaper than any 4K capable PC. Now, there are limitations of course, but I'm willing to make allowances here, especially in the early days, bearing in mind the future games I've seen, like Horizon Zero Dawn and Days Gone, which both look spectacular. But what's interesting from my perspective is just how many different high resolution modes I've seen so far and we've only just started looking at Pro software. Now, some of you might remember that I built a PC to the Pro's GPU spec and came to the conclusion that maybe 1440p was a better fit for the capabilities of the hardware. Now that was before I found out exactly how checkerboarding really works, but what's clear is that this technique is not so easy to implement. And in the launch period at least, Plenty of games are using straight upscaling to produce a 4K output. Uncharted 4 is the big one. It is indeed operating at 1440p or something very close to it and runs at a very similar performance level to the standard game on base PS4 hardware. While the 60fps multiplayer gets a bump from 900p to 1080p. So yeah, no proper 4K mode for PS4's flagship game. And that may feel like a bit of a letdown, but I must say that the temporal super sampling just looks great and this title still looks really cool on a 4K screen, but it is softer than you might have hoped. Titanfall 2, now that uses the same dynamic scaling technology as the base PlayStation 4 game, but with more GPU power it runs at resolutions much higher than 1080p. But again, we see 1440p here as the top end resolution. Modern Warfare Remastered? Yeah, this is an interesting one. It actually gets a 125% resolution increase over the base PS4 version. It runs at about 2880 by 1620 and it looks good. But from another perspective, that is only 56% of the resolution of a native 4K frame buffer. Now, The Last of Us Remastered. 60 FPS on Pro with a sub-native resolution. However, you can swap over to a 30 Hertz mode where you get improved shadow quality and yes, full native 4K. And we do indeed have another title running at native 4K, the Skyrim Special Edition. Now, what's curious about this one is that performance is basically identical to the standard PS4 game and foliage draw distance may even get a minor upgrade. So with all this in mind, it sort of makes me wonder just how much the base PS4 version is actually being held back. Okay, so what's clear is that just about every Pro title supports higher resolution mode, but it may be some time before we see more developers get to grips with the hardware to offer up actual 4K support. Checkerboarding has handed in some really nice results so far, whether at 1800p or full 2160p 4K. But it's clear that standard upscaling, where we see lower resolution frame buffers, well, it's obviously easier for developers to implement. And what's clear is that some game makers are spinning out their own techniques for 4K output. Insomniac's Ratchet 
Ratchet and Clank uses a form of temporal injection to produce some remarkable results. Oh, and of course, it would be remiss of me not to talk about HDR, high dynamic range. The front end has automatic and off functions, and generally speaking, actual HDR toggles are in the games themselves, as you can see here in Uncharted 4. We can't really show you the benefits of HDR in this medium, but we can say that more detail is resolved and some titles just look spectacular but it involves you having to own a really expensive display to get the best out of it. And the lower your budget for a new screen, the less impressive the results from HDR generally. But that's a topic for another time. Okay, look, so we've had the Pro for less than a week so far, and there's still so much to test. For example, I know that PSVR titles get Pro enhancements too, and we really need to go in depth on this. But in the here and now, this is what I think about Sony's new console. There's a really smart use of what is still a relatively small amount of GPU power, especially compared to the latest and greatest PC graphics technology. Now this chip really shouldn't be capable of running 4K console games, and yet already we've seen some pretty impressive stuff. But also, what's clear is that right now at least, Many developers are utilizing the Pro in less sophisticated ways. We're seeing resolution boosts, sure, but many titles aren't running at 4K or anything close to it. And that may well disappoint many, bearing in mind the whole pitch behind the consoles. So, what's the bottom line? Well, PS4 Pro was built to a budget, which is why it doesn't have a UHD Blu-ray drive and why it doesn't integrate the PSVR external processor. And I think that targeting that price so aggressively may well be a really smart move on Sony's behalf. Right now, it's clear that the tech is there to get some excellent results, almost on par with native 4K. And some titles do deliver that, but many others clearly do not. But when the machine is so keenly priced, I reckon you're still getting a really good deal, bearing in mind that it is so much more powerful than either the standard PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One and it doesn't cost that much more. And I've seen just how good some of the future games look, so I think over time we will see more, better Pro implementations, whether they're native 4K, checkerboard, or otherwise. Sony's throwing down the gauntlet here, and I can't wait to see how Microsoft responds. But well, there's a long wait there, and in the here and now, that's all I've got for you. As always, do like, subscribe, and share our work. Oh, and do please consider supporting our Patreon. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.